27. Kansas State beats Texas Tech tonight in Lubbock. Derek Young and I have Casey online here from Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, where the Wildcats win to move to 7-4 and on the season. This is the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Here in segment one, we'll go drive by drive for a number of scoring drives, Derek Young, in this game. Before we do, though, a big win for K-State. A lot of chances to lose momentum tonight and lose three straight. The Wildcats found a way to get a win. Yeah, they really scrapped it out and then escaped at the end with this victory. And like you said, a lot of scoring. Most of that came in the second half. Really struggled to score in the first half, but the defense was really good in the first half. Though it fell apart in the second half, some help from the special teams kind of spearheaded the victory. I'll give you some credit for that. We saw it on Twitter. If you haven't already had D. Young rivals, he may have told me 12 seconds before Josh Young blew the kickoff return that if K-State's going to win a close game like this, they probably need a special teams play, and they got that. Let's go score by score here as we get through segment one on the KSO Sunday show. Again, brought to you by both People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. First score does not come to 119 left in the first quarter. It is a Blake Lynch 32-yard field goal, another in the red zone field goal from the Wildcats. 10 plays, 52 yards, 548 off the clock, D.Y. K-State leads 3-0 after that. Let me give you one more so I give you a little bit more to cover than just that one drive. Texas Tech would answer with a field goal of its own after a 9-play 51-yard drive. And still, with four minutes left, roughly in the second quarter, it's still just 3-3 K-State Texas Tech here in Lubbock. Yeah, and throughout this game, the two sides really traded scores more often than not. And for Texas Tech, they, they moved the ball so fast, or at least uh, perform at a very high pace, that there was a point in the game where they had a three and out that only lasted 39 seconds. That's why you saw all the possessions that you did in the first half, but most of them did come without scores. And then they probably slowed the pace down a little bit in the second half, and that's when you saw more scores. And so a really ironic and kind of silly and funny game. Absolutely. A very, very interesting game. So with 4.33 left in the second quarter, we get another field goal. It's a Blake Lynch 32-yard field goal. It's like his first one. Eight plays, 61 yards. K-State leads 6-3 D.Y., but again, problem scoring touchdowns to this point, at least in the red zone. Yeah, I've said it before that that because Blake Lynch was so efficient and, and really not missing for the, you know the, everything this year besides the first field goal of the season, that he'd probably come through and win a game for K-State. And, and in a way, he did today. Yeah. He missed a field goal, but uh, they really needed him because, again, they struggled to score touchdowns when in the red zone. D.Y. reference Blake Lynch didn't miss one field goal today. It was a 45-yarder from distance with a really odd finish to the first half. Texas Tech runs a kind of an inexcusable fake punt from midfield. Gives K-State a chance to really take control before the half. The Wildcats, Wildcats can't do it, though. Lynch misses the field goal. It is six to 6-3 at halftime. Derek, it doesn't take long, though, for K-State to take control of this game in the second half. A much different half, as you've already referenced. With 10-20 left in the third quarter, Phillip Brooks scores on a 14-yard catch and run, really, from Skylar Thompson, where he broke a tackle, got in the end zone. Nine plays, 75 yards. Another first drive, second half touchdown for this Courtney Messingham offense. K-State's up 13-3. Just another uh, example of how twisted this game kind of was. That was a play that when called uh, and when you saw it unfold, you didn't think that it would go for a touchdown. It really wasn't intended to. But then you have two, you know, two other plays in this game that were intended to be touchdowns that weren't. You talked about the end of the first half and that sequence that didn't really go Kansas State's way. They called it touchdown pass. Skylar Thompson nailed Viking Gill yep. in the back of the end zone, middle of the field for a touchdown. It was dropped. It went on to miss the field goal. There was a game play later in the game. That also included Skylar Thompson and White King Gill, and this time it was Skylar Thompson overthrowing him. But Phillip Brooks gets the touchdown. He'd actually leave the game later with an injury. He did come back, but only for special teams. It was back and forth the rest of this game. It didn't take long for Texas Tech to answer on a Sir Roderick Thompson five-yard touchdown run. That made it 13-10 with 7.06 left in the third quarter. But on the next rule play of this game, Josh Youngblood goes 100 yards down the right sideline, and K-State's back up 20 to 10. So touchdown, touchdown, and we're in for a shootout here in the second half in Lubbock. Yeah, once Kansas State went up 13 to 3, and the next drive for Texas Tech, which did end up in a touchdown to make it 13 to 10, Kansas State had two chances in that drive to get off the field without giving up any points, couldn't do it. Then they get the answer from Joshua Youngblood to go back up 10 points again on a kicker off return for a touchdown. He gets the uh, unsportsmanlike penalty yep. for dancing after the touchdown. Texas Tech get, operates from a short field, gets a touchdown again. Whether or not it was a good call, I don't know. I didn't really see it. Joshua Youngblood, to his credit, though, in postgame, was very accountable for that. Believed it was his fault, believed it was deserved, and just had a great attitude about it. That was 6.52 in the third quarter, and Josh Youngblood scores from 100 yards out to make it 20-10. to 10. At 5.31, so 1.21 later, Tech's right back on the board, thanks in part to that short field because of the penalty and a good kick return. 
Eric Azukenema, I believe it is. These are tough names for the Red Raiders. Of course, from 21 yards out from an easy name, Jet Duffy, he threw for well over 300 yards today. And again, we still got 531 left in the third quarter. It's 20 to 17, K State over Texas Tech. Jet Duffy was quite the gunslinger today. I don't think he was thinking a whole lot when he was throwing the ball. He would just get back there and throw it as hard as he That's could, right. as you noted several times. And Kansas State made him pay a few times. Daquan Patton with an interception. We'll probably talk about Denzel Goldsby picking off no the doubt. pass later. A couple of great plays by those guys. K State comes right back less than three minutes later. Actually, just over three minutes later with a Blake Lynch 43-yard field goal, a little more distance. Not a red zone, I don't want to say failure, but mistake by the offense here. Nine plays, 50 yards, 314 off the clock. K-State back in control. 20, well, in control is a strong word in this game. 23-17 with 217 left to play. Derek, I'm going to skip ahead to the fourth quarter because there are so many scoring drives. The Red Raiders get into K-State's red zone. They do have a play called a touchdown that has been changed to an incomplete pass, which I thought was the correct call. They have to settle for a Trey Rolf 27-yard field goal. They're down 23-20 with 1435 left in the fourth quarter instead of being ahead 24-23. Yeah, one-point lead turns into a three-point deficit. They still come away from points, but that was a big sequence in the game and probably – it gives us a moment here to talk about Lance Robinson's input in this game no and doubt. his contribution. He probably didn't impact that throw as much as he would other throws in this game, but he was someone that was thrusted in because of the uh, Walter Neal getting injured again and A.J. Parker already being out. It's the first extended action of Lance Robinson this year. He was one of the better defensive performers because Texas Tech definitely challenged him throughout the second half. Very glad you brought him up. Good to see him play the way he did today and make such an impact on the game, no, no doubt about it. Another guy made a huge impact, Baston Taylor. It was the next touchdown for K-State. 48 yards out, a beautiful throw from Skylar Thompson. A really nice route from Chabaston Taylor, like you said in the press box. He also got drew a couple pass interference calls in the second half of this game that were big. K-State goes up 30-20 to 20 on that touchdown to Chabaston Taylor. And the one pass interference penalty that he caused, it's because he got his defender to bite on the double move he had to hold, so Taylor didn't burn him deep. So without that pen penalty, you're probably looking at another Chabaston Taylor big play. So it was his best game as a Wildcat, though they're about to play Iowa State. He was pretty good against Iowa State a year ago, so he's turning it on when we've seen him turn it on before. A couple of non-scoring plays to talk about. Like you said, one, we have a fake punt from Texas Tech. We were stunned they were going to punt from midfield down two scores with like six minutes left. They weren't punting. They ran a fake. It worked. On the very next play, though, Denzel Goolsby picks off. Texas Tech in the end zone. Essentially, they don't end the game there, but that was one of the biggest plays of the game that really hurt the Red Raiders' chances of getting this comeback completed. Yeah, and the final seal and the final nail in the coffin uh, for Texas Tech was the Skylar Thompson scramble in the last drive because that forced Texas Tech to use their last timeout, and, and the kids, they was able to kneel it the rest of the way. No doubt about it. I left off an R.J. Turner long touchdown on fourth down that I actually missed walking down the ramp to see what was happening. I just heard the crowd reaction. That's your final score to make it 30-27. to 27. As D.Y. said, a huge run from Skylar Thompson, then James Gilbert to really seal this one for the Wildcats' seventh win of the season. That wraps up segment one of the KSO Sunday Show, brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We'll come back here for segment two. We'll hear from Chris Kleiman down here in Lubbock. Then we'll come back for segment three with D.Y. We'll talk some big picture and get out of here. This is the KSO Sunday Show on K-State Online. I want to say just we got to take shots. we got to take shots. And that's something that we've been, been talking about, um, you know, stretching the field, throwing the ball down the field, making, you know, DBs make plays. Like, like I mean, you guys saw today, we had a lot of situations where we got defensive pass from the fans just because they're just tracking the ball and, and hold our guys, you know. And, um, you know that, that, that's huge for us. So, uh, you know, we, we made some plays down the field today. Uh, but overall, this is a team effort. We all we all contributed. The uh, offense, defense, special teams. We all played part in this win today, and I'm just so so proud that we came on the road. This was a tough game. We knew this was gonna be a tough game coming into it. Um, Texas Tech is is way better than what the record says, and they played hard. We knew they were going to play hard on senior night, and um, you know, it, it, it was huge for our seniors to go on the road and win their last road game. The picks was great. They had had one. This is probably one of the second one. Had one yep. KU week, but they won us from it. He's gonna make great strides this whole season. And you see what he's doing on the field. He made a good stop late in the game. And then Nizel, then the safety that he is, flew over the top of me and got a pick on the guy who was actually yeah. trying to guard. So just just two tremendous guys, you know what I'm saying, who had, who had great effort to the ball, you know. So hats off to both of them. You know, your back's against the wall and, uh, you know, who's going to show up. And uh, we're the type of team where I think that we're never going to be out of the fight. Um, and we take pride in those moments, you know. It's easy to kind of shy away and when it seems like they have no the momentum, but, uh, you know, we're a competitive team, and I think that, you know, those are the moments where we want to show the world, you know, who we are, and it doesn't matter if they're going to drive or whatever the case is, we're going to step up and make a play. And uh, on that drive, it just happened to be me, but there was a lot of other guys who made plays all through the night, and I think that uh, it was just a great team win. And he's just turning around, like, like Coach said, one play at a time, you know what I'm saying? Let, 
the past go, get ready for the next thing that, that we got. Because if you dwell on the past and your mind's on this, you might be slowing the next play. But Denzel being the guy that he is, one of our leaders, I'm, I knew he was going to play. So. What was your reaction when you got that fly after the touchdown? Uh, it, was, it was selfish. Um, it won't happen again. I just want to tell everybody, like, all the fans listening, it was selfish. You know, my high school coach probably going to call me and get on me. You know, he, he didn't. Know, teach me that, so it was just selfish. So it won't happen again. Oh, so you so, like you deserved it. You don't yeah, I deserve. I definitely oh, deserved okay. it. It was selfish. Should have celebrated with my teammates. But uh, it won't happen again. Was it? So was it the dance part that they yeah, got you for I, then? Yeah, it was. I don't, yeah, uh, it won't happen again. Yeah. Coach okay. Coach Common taught me about it. Um, all the coaches said something to me, so it won't happen again. It was very selfish. It just shows that we're a dangerous unit. Um, I think a lot of teams are gonna look at the film and be like. Try to kick it out of the end zone. Because whether it goes to me and Phil, we're going to try to make a big return. We have great guys that are uh, blocking for us, open up the lane. So it's, it's not that hard for the, for the returners. And that when everybody does their job, all we got to do is run, run fast. So. Uh, couldn't be happier for our players and, and our coaches. Um, tremendous fight, tremendous resolve. Um, good football team that we beat today in Texas Tech and did it on the road and uh, had some <coughs> adversity and fought through the adversity. and. Um, you know, had, have had a couple of uh, tough weeks, uh, but I also told the guys that we're getting better, we're growing, uh, guys are believing, we're, we're, we're heading in the right direction. And uh, this was a big win for the program so that the guys know that the direction we're heading is the right way. And I and, uh, uh, couldn't be happier for our seniors uh, to rally the troops this week. And, and we played a lot of guys. And we were beat up out there. And we played a lot of guys. And guys stepped up and made plays. And um, we just had to finish. We kept talking about finishing and believing. And we did that and uh, happy for the win. What kind of lift did Josh Youngblood give you on that return? Big play, you know, uh, and some great blocks, and he followed the blocks. But, uh, you know, the special teams part, I, I thought we won each phase, even if it were by a little bit. I thought we won each phase, and that was a big play um, to get us a, a quick score. I thought maybe the D-line looked tired late, but then Wyatt Hebert makes a huge sack, makes another one later. I thought his plays in the fourth quarter he, for you guys. He was, he was determined. And, uh, yes, I mean, we played 81 snaps, and, and uh, uh, that's probably about average for what Texas Tech is, is doing. And, and when you throw the kickoff return in there, then you're back-to-back -back on defense, which is, which is always difficult. But uh, I thought Wyatt really stepped up, especially in the second half. And I, I kind of knew – as good as we played in the first half on defense, and we played lights out in that first half, they were going to make some really good adjustments, and they did. But we found a way late to get a couple of stops. Yeah, what was it to you that made the biggest difference in the second half for both offenses to get going? Well, our offense, I thought just we blocked a lot better. I did. I thought we blocked uh, exceptionally well. And then we had talked at halftime about we had to take some shots vertically. And we took a number of shots vertically, got a number of pass interference. How about Seabass? What about Sebastian? What a great job of, of uh, going for the football and, and creating a number of pass interference. And then uh, I thought Skyler threw a great ball to him on the touchdown. And then you just got to give um, Texas Tech credit. We threw everything at them in the first half, and I thought we did a phenomenal job. Um, but they, they're a good offense, and that's what a, a tempo offense does. They make adjustments. But I was still really pleased. Obviously, the last touchdown that they make, uh, um, we were out of position. We didn't blow the coverage. We were just out of position. But that was probably the only time all day that I thought we were out of position. And against that offense, that's pretty good. On your last possession on that third and 11 deep, what did you see on Skylar Thompson's scramble for a first down? Well, um, I think it was more designed to run a QB draw uh, because they were playing some two-man against us, trying to take away Dalton. And, and, uh, and so they weren't having eyes to the football. And I thought Skylar did a great job of letting it clear uh, and then making a guy miss to get a first down. And, and, and that's something that was really big for us with four minutes left or whatever it was and they're kicking from the 50 and they yes. kick off deep and say okay we're going to get a stop and uh, hats off to our offensive line and, and to James for a big run as well that uh, we were able to kill that clock with two timeouts left for him. What was the key for you guys surviving all those injuries and still getting by? 
that I, I goes to everybody has a role on this team and you own your role and you don't know when you're going to be called upon but when you are you got a ton of brothers in there that that you're battling for that you got to step up i thought lance did a great job uh we were going to play him this week he's been really doing a good job at practice we were going to play him no matter what then all of a sudden walt goes down early in the game and lance is playing basically the whole game with d-pat and so uh did a great job there then we lose uh, Malik and now Sebastian's getting a chance to come in and make some plays and so it's just the next the next man up and, and we're beat up there's no doubt about that but uh, so is everybody else and nobody's going to feel sorry for you so the next guy's got to go ready be ready to play. Do you have any idea on the severity with Malik and Walt? I, I don't um, hopefully we'll know early in the week. So I was going to ask too the the flag that Josh got on the after the kickoff return, what was it specifically that he got I think flagged it was an for? Sportsmanlike, and I didn't see it. The guys in the box were telling me, um, he "Can't he can't do that? He knows that. I know he's an excitable guy. He's 18 years old. This is his second kickoff return in the Big 12. I want him to be excited. I want him to have some juice. But uh, um, whatever he did, we've we've got to clean up. But um, we, we like Josh Youngblood back there returning kicks." On the late interception from Skyler, is that a play where you think a deep shot's like a like a punt if it gets picked off, or is that a mistake that maybe he made you didn't want him no, to throw? No, I, I didn't mind that because we tried to throw the underneath route and they took Phillip away, and so then he took a shot on a third and what was it five or six, uh, and so no, I, I I was okay there because you know you, you're trying to make a play. Plus, think of it from the kids' perspective. We threw a deep six, seven times, and they just mug us, and they're calling pass interference penalties. So let's take a shot. Is this the kind of game that can really launch you guys? I mean, you guys went, went ugly. You show your moxie today, and Eric Do you think we won survive. ugly today? Mm -hmm. Do you think we won ugly today? <laughs> we only got one game left. How much is this going to catapult us? We got one game left. We found a way. But you're, you're right. I, I mean, Scott, it's probably never going to be just perfect for us. Um, because we're learning our systems and, and we're beat up and, and those other things. I just, I, I was so excited because the guys are believing that we're getting better. And I, I know when I told the guys, does it show up every Saturday on the scoreboard? No, but I see it every day in practice. And that's what I want. I mean, this is, I'm not building this thing for one year. We're seeing this thing five, six, ten years down the road if Gene will have me here. But I want to make sure that those guys say, hey, we can find a way to win these games. And I, that's what I'm so excited about is the guys believe. Yeah. Uh, another pick for Daquan where he got great depth, where he started pretty close line of scrimmage and made an interception. How good has he gotten at that part of his game? He's gotten so much better at zone coverage. And Coach Hayes has done a really good job of, of, of emphasizing that. And uh, to go along with that, Denzel Goolsby came up big time with his interception after they after they ran the fake punt and they went right to work and and Denzel did what we asked him to do be a great center fielder back there and make a big time play. Did you see the block Skyler threw on James run to get that I first did down? Not. Was it a good block? I mean it James was, was kind yeah. of bottled up and then he broke it outside and uh, that was a big play. Anything else? Uh, I I know it didn't end up mattering because Denzel intercepted the next pass, but what, what did go wrong in that fake punt that they ran? We talk all the time about covering those guys all the way down until they get within 15 yards of Phillip or whomever, and we had a lapse. I'm sorry to call it. For about 15 yards and not for about 30 yards. It was, it was something that we've talked about um, and something we, we got to make sure that doesn't happen again, but it's, it's a good play by them. We kind of fell asleep, to be honest with you. Sorry to call the win ugly, but this is uh, You're okay. This, it still counts. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this this is kind of the version of Big 12 after dark here. Things just got kind of kind of crazy. What, what has the Big 12 season been like for this team and for you as a whole? The first time through, it's a great learning experience for me. Um, uh, just uh, the, the venues being tough. This was a tough. The band never would stop playing today when we would have the ball. I mean. It, it was really difficult uh, for us to get some plays off, uh, but the venues are tough. Um, the athleticism is exceptionally well, but you, you just got to keep fighting. You're always in games, and that's the thing I'm so proud of is the guys keep fighting in every game, and, and obviously as a staff, we're going to learn a lot as we go back at the end of the season and see all the opponents and, and, and the commonalities between the teams. Anything else? Right, thanks. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. I think it just shows how much we believe in each other. We believe in these coaches. We believe um, in this program. And, you know, I think that uh, going into the game, there was a lot of outside noise about, you know, what could possibly happen the rest of the season. And 
Texas Tech, you know, beating West Virginia the way that they did. So I think that for us, you know, it's just blocking out that outside noise, um, coming together, believing in each other, putting together a great week of practice like we did last week, and then just coming out on Saturday ready to execute. A couple more guys. I remember thinking you were awfully down at the Iowa State game last year in Ames. How excited are you having another shot at those guys and a lot of momentum behind your back going into it? Yeah, well, <clears throat> last year's game was tough. It was tough um, on a whole bunch of different levels. But, um, you know, Iowa State, it's always a great game. It's always a great game, um, and it's a great football team that is really well coached. They got really good players, um, and it's always a close game. Um, and we know we're going to get their best. And they're going to get our best. Um, and I got tons of respect for Coach Campbell and you know Brock Purdy. Um, you know, just watching film throughout the season. You know, on, on defenses. You know, that you know Brock is, is a great player, and I know he's a great person. Um, I got to meet his little brother on a on a recruiting visit. Um, you know, this uh, past spring, uh, Chuba. Um, so, you know, I, I just got a lot of respect for those guys. I know it's going to be a dog fight, um, but that's what this is all about. You know? that, that, that's why, that's why I love this game so much. You know? and it's going to be huge for us. You know, it's, it's going to be a great, you know, great, great day, senior night. Um, lots on the table. Uh, to go finish the season out strong, and you know, we just got to play our cards right, focus on one day at a time. Um, continue this to get better. Back for the third and final segment of this week's KSO Sunday show from inside of Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. He's Derek Young. I'm Matt Hall. Grant Flanders behind the camera. Derek, as we said, this gets K-State its seventh win of the season. One more game to play. We'll talk about that here late, but seven wins feels like a good accomplishment for Chris Kleiman in this first season. Yeah, because if I'm being honest, I'm not exactly sure that this is a seven-win roster, so I think they've already exceeded expectations on that front. Going into the season, I thought, Five wins was pretty possible, and that the reaching a bowl game was probably the achievement that they needed a gun for. So now they're even shooting beyond that. They have a chance at eight wins and beating what is probably one of their biggest rivals and someone that they would consider a rival in Iowa State. It really has become one, no, no doubt about it. I want to talk about that here in just a second, but you mentioned some unsung heroes in the segment one. We talked about Chabasta Taylor. We talked about Denzel Gouls. We talked about Phillip Brooks. There's so many names we could mention in this game. But I want to ask about that. K-State injuries, everyone's hurt this time of year. Not just K-State, but K-State is pretty beat up. They come in here, a lot goes against them, and so many guys step up. What does that say for this program and what they're building here in Manhattan? Yeah, everyone's banged up this time of year. Kansas State was probably just as banged up as anyone. And then it probably went to another level throughout this game, losing a couple more defensive backs. We didn't know that they wouldn't have Jonathan Durham entering this game, so that was interesting. True freshman Will Jones hasn't played any meaningful time this year. He was out in the, in the, at the end of the game against Texas Tech, so that's another, you know, an unsung hero. Cody Fletcher probably played his best game of the year. He really closed uh, the gap on a couple throws yep. from the linebacker position. Daquan Patton was great again. He's probably someone that's having his best season by far as a Kansas State Wildcat. I guess when I say here in Manhattan, I mean back home in Manhattan because we're in <laughs> Lubbock. We're going back home to Manhattan like K-State is next week, too. For Iowa State, Farmageddon, whatever you want to call it, it has become a fun rivalry. Derek, this is not a Big 12 championship game. These teams aren't playing for New Year's Six Bowl, but you're looking for eight or nine wins for these teams, possibly ten with a bowl game for Iowa State. This is a big game for these two programs. In case they had a really tough loss last year to Iowa State names, what do you think about this game going into it a week out? We'll cover it all week long, of course, but thoughts right now. Yeah, last year was an emotional loss, last game of the season, so they want to avenge that. And this is a significant game for both programs because I think they would – both feel accomplished winning eight going eight and four it would be back-to-back eight and four seasons right. I think for the Cyclones which I don't know when the last time that certainly happened Kansas State a good eight and four season would be considered an immense accomplishment so I think both teams have a lot to play for and both are going to enter the game coming off a win and having all the momentum in the world it just probably spikes this rivalry up a little bit more it's one of the biggest K-State Iowa State games I can remember. Again, neither team playing for a championship or anything like that, but two programs on the rise. I'm excited for it. Should be a very fun week at K-State Online. I appreciate Derek's work all day here in Lubbock. Grant Flanders, Logan Mance, who was here on the sideline tonight, got some pictures for us, got some video you'll see. Really appreciate those guys. Thanks to People State Bank and Legacy Insurance, as always, for sponsoring the KSO Sunday Show. So for Grant, for Derek, for Logan, I'm Matt. We just need one thing from you. Thank you.